Good morning, and welcome to our Mass from the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We pray that you and your loved ones are in good health. Please check our parish website for updates and for links to devotion and other information, as well as how to continue to financially support the parish as we journey through this virus pandemic. Thank you for your continued support. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our entrance hymn is number 490 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Like a Shepherd, number 490. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome everyone uh, locally and from all over the world who watch us um, participate in our Masses every day. We hope that you are doing well during this virus pandemic. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, today we remember Blessed Marie Leone Paradi, who was the founders, founders of the Little Sisters of the Holy Family in Memracook, New Brunswick, and she was beatified by Pope John Paul II in 1984. And as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts, to forgive us for the times we have failed to be good shepherds to one another, to lovingly care have compassion and mercy for each other. We ask the Lord's forgiveness.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, perfect light of the blessed, by whose gift we celebrate the Paschal mysteries on earth, bring us, we pray, to rejoice in the full measure of your grace for ages unending. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men, sent to me from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me. And when we entered the man's house, he told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and, and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm is at number 84 in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 84.
Gospel according to John. <clears throat> Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to 
to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading today, continuing in the season of Easter from the Acts of the Apostles, we see Peter giving us a good example of evangelizing when he courageously followed the Holy Spirit and brought the good news to the Gentiles, despite criticism from even his own brothers. And as Jesus said in the Gospel, I have other sheep that do not belong to the fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Responding to the Lord's call in our world today involves putting ourselves on the line as well and facing sometimes a great deal of opposition and challenge, certainly challenging us to bring the good news of Jesus to a world that often rejects it. The best thing that we can do for others then is to walk with them to help them discover how best to find God as they discover God's love for them so that they can embrace that love and reflect it to the world. In the Gospel today, we continue the reading from St. John's Gospel from yesterday, the Good Shepherd Sunday. The image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd of the Father's flock is one of the most beautiful images we have of him. Jesus is the Good Shepherd whose sheep belong to him, they know his voice, and they follow him. It is very difficult in our noisy and busy world to hear the voice of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Many voices compete for our attention. So we really have to make the time and effort and priority put into developing our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. To do that, we need to find the time for prayer, to be with him, to talk to him, to listen to his voice, and to follow what that voice tells us to do. For Christ, the Good Shepherd, leads, protects, and cares for his sheep. And when they stray or become lost, he searches them out and tenderly brings them back on his shoulders. He's ready to give up his life to protect them. That image of Christ as the Good Shepherd shows his loving care for the human family and how precious each one of us is in the eyes of God. Each one of us has a special place in the heart of Christ who calls each one of us by our name. He is the con- our constant guardian and guide who gently calls us home when we have wandered away. What response then do we make for Christ? great love and generosity towards us. Our response to the call of Christ involves being good shepherds ourselves after the heart of God for one another. It involves being the body of Christ for others in times of need, being healers in times of sorrow, being towers of strength for them in times of distress, and being a shoulder to lean upon when support is needed. It is important to remember, especially in this time, in these challenges of this global virus pandemic, that as a church community and as individuals, our fundamental vocation is to be a loving, caring people with a mind through which Christ thinks, a heart through which Christ loves, a voice through which Christ speaks, and hands through which Christ helps. We offer our prayers of intercession today, trusting in God's merciful help for us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Peter, and for all church leaders who shepherd our church during these difficult times, we pray to the Lord. For all who are sick and lonely, the isolated, the heavily burdened in our homes, health care facilities, and for all those who provide compassionate care for them in this time of physical distancing, we pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life in our archdiocese, that many people may hear the voice of the Good Shepherd calling them to serve the Lord in a special way. We pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for protection and strength to our health care workers who recommit themselves every day to minister to those most vulnerable in our midst in the face of extreme health challenges. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the mother of Father 
Ray Earl, Father sorry, Earl Smith, at um, Pius Tent, who has asked for our prayers. His mom is very sick in Halifax. And we pray for her and for his intention and the intention of his families. We pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, and we take some time to bring them into our heart and, and our mind as we remember them and pray for them. pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer all of our prayers. You know that We know that you will hear them in your own time, your own way. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. For in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more the Lamb once slain who lives forever, and therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostle St. John the Baptist and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share the peace of Christ now with one another.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my, under my roof, but only but say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 6.6 in Celebrate in Song, One Love Released, number 6.6. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray to Mary now for help and protection during this pandemic. O Mary, you always, always shine, shine in our path, path as, as a sign, sign of salvation, salvation and of hope. And of hope. We, entrust we entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, sick who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that, as in Cain of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are on trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. You too, Father. Our missioning hymn is number 383 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Number 383. <laughs> 